Hello everybody, this is Don McClure with Family Abroad and today we're exploring a little bit of Cyprus. We've been uh, working a lot and haven't really been able to get out like we should, so we're finally out and about. And the first place we're going to go to is the birthplace of Aphrodite. This is the rock formation right here. So what happened was, according to mythology, is that Mother Earth was, I guess, unhappy with her husband. The husband was Uranus. So she asked one of her sons to kill him. And so the son cut off the testicles of his father and threw them into the ocean. And when he did that, they became foam. And that was basically how Aphrodite came about. She was originally somewhere else, but floated this way and came ashore basically right here in Cyprus. There's a legend that if you swim around Aphrodite's rock three times, you will find your true love. And now when I told that to Bethany, she told both me and Edith, we're not allowed to swim around it just in case we're not each other's true love. I thought that was pretty funny, but um, actually it's dangerous. You're not allowed, first of all, to climb the rock uh, right there in the front. And it's very dangerous according to the local to swim around it due to the currents of the ocean. So here we are in Omodos. It's a traditional wine village. We pass lots of wineries on the way here, and there is a old monastery that we're gonna walk over to and look at. It's a, supposedly a very traditional village. This is the Monastery of the Holy Cross right here. Padulis is a pretty popular summer resort and there's a series of 12 churches around the Tudos mountain range. They're all protected by UNESCO and we're going to be here at the Archangel Michael Church which was founded in 1474. Now one thing about all these churches they have very beautiful frescoes that are in very good condition. I think that's what makes them a UNESCO site. They were built around the time of the Byzantine Empire so let's see what what they look like.
the uh, Byzantine Museum, which holds a lot of the icons that's been collected over the centuries. Unfortunately, it's closed today. It's right across from the church. Bottle, spaghetti, shrimp, shrimp. Okay, hummus, we can go chicken kebabs, wonderful. Don't have chicken and pork, right? No, just chicken. Okay, we're at the Kikos Monastery. So we are in the Kikos Monastery, or Kaikos Monastery in Cyprus. It's a beautiful monastery, it's from the 11th century, and it was established during the Byzantine Empire, which had its capital in Constantinople, which is not too far away, and is now an Ist called Istanbul, part of Turkey. But at that time, it was part of the Byzantine Empire, and it's got a neat story behind this monastery. The story goes that in the 11th century, there was a governor who came here, uh, maybe he was a military person, but he was a governor of Cyprus at the time. And he would came up here into the mountains to escape the brutal heat. Apparently he lost his way, and he ran across a hermit, but the hermit refused to speak to him. And he was very rude to the hermit and left. Returned to the capital here in, in Cyprus, where he became very, very sick. And he started thinking about what's the cause of his sickness, and he believed it was because he had offended the hermit. At the same time, the hermit was having a dream, and the vision told him that the governor was sick, and that he would agree to heal him if the governor would get a very famous icon that had touched the hands of the Virgin Mary, and was painted by St. Luke the Evangelist. It had a lot of healing powers, and was very famous. So it was pretty unlikely that the emperor was gonna let that go, but that's what the dream said. And he told the governor, and the governor was very much like, ah, I don't think that's going to work. But he finally agreed to, that he would go with the hermit uh, to Constantinople and try to get the relic from the emperor. Well, the governor started having really second thoughts about everything, knowing he probably couldn't face the emperor to ask for such an important relic. And time went by, and nothing happened. Well, about that time, the emperor's daughter came to visit in Cyprus, and she too became struck down with the same sickness. And so this was the hermit's opportunity again through what he considered divine intervention for him to be able to get the icon here to Cyprus and so he healed the emperor's daughter in exchange for the icon. Well, the emperor had agreed to that, but the emperor said, there's no way I'm really going to let this icon go. And so the emperor devised a plan where he was going to have some artist basically recreate the icon. But the problem was the emperor had a dream. And in that dream, the Virgin Mary actually came to him and said that she wanted to go to Cyprus. And so therefore he agreed and released the icon to go to the Kikos Monastery. And it said that there was a bird flying around that spoke in a human voice. And it basically said that the golden daughter was coming, which of course is the Virgin Mary, and that she would never leave. It's also said that the Virgin Mary actually has come here to Cyprus herself to visit Lazarus. But when she was brought, the icon was brought to Cyprus, the trees nearby, the saint bent over as a sign of respect, bowing down for the Virgin Mary icon. The Virgin Mary icon is usually veiled, about two thirds of it, usually you can't see that. And it's known for healing powers, as well as helping to fight against drought and other natural disasters.
monastery and we're on the way back to our area near Fafis and we're cutting through the Fafis forest as well as right now we're in the Cedar Valley. The cedars are harder to see. There. There's a trail you can go on and uh, hike to. This is a nice hiking trail. Uh, but there's a trail you can go to to see uh, a large grove of cedars.